Hey guys, Jay here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to install a WAMP server on your Windows computer. First off, what is WAMP? WAMP stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Most of you probably already know what Windows is. And then Apache is an open source HTTP web server. MySQL is an open source relational database management system. And PHP is an open source server side scripting language. The WAMP server includes all of the above packages and is generally used for hosting websites. The web pages are generated by PHP, which has access to the MySQL database, and the files are served over HTTP by the Apache web server. An alternative to the WAMP stack is the LAMP stack. In this case, the L stands for Linux, and the rest of the acronym remains the same. Although the P may be replaced or supplemented with Python instead of, or in addition to, PHP. The WAMP and LAMP stacks are very popular web stacks. If you purchase a web hosting plan from HostGator, GoDaddy, DreamHost, or Bluehost, chances are they will be running the LAMP stack. They may be running WAMP, but in general, most of these services are going to be running Linux for performance reasons and because it's cheaper for the host company as they don't have to buy a Windows key for each server. Even though LAMP is more popular on servers, I'll be showing you how to install WAMP because Windows is a more popular desktop operating system. Although installing WAMP is different than installing LAMP, Using them is pretty much the same, so time spent learning to use WAMP on your desktop computer will translate to using LAMP on a server in the future. Let's go ahead and get into the install. We will be installing WAMP Server from WAMPServer.com. This is the simplest way to install WAMP that I've found, and we only have to download and run one installer, and Apache, MySQL, and PHP are all installed. It's a really nice environment that is super easy to set up and use. Open up your web browser and go to WAMPServer.com en. EN is the English web page. This site was built by a French team. Scroll down to the download section at the bottom of the page and click the download button for the version of Windows that you're using, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. This will open up a dialog box. Click the download directly link and you'll be taken to a secure source forge.net page. Do not click any of these ads. They're all clickbait. Your download will begin automatically without clicking any of these ads. Once the download completes, run the file. If you're not signed into an administrator account, you'll be prompted to enter admin credentials to begin installation. I guess OBS doesn't record the admin prompt for security reasons because my recording was black at this point. That's pretty cool, I guess. Still not sure if this is a feature or a bug. If you're already signed into an admin account, you won't need to do this step. Then you'll need to accept their license agreement and you can go ahead and install in the default folder. Since I'm not in an admin account, I'm actually going to change this to my user folder so I don't have to keep entering admin creds. Once you've selected a folder, go ahead and click through the menu. Installation will begin. This will take a few minutes. When installation is almost done, you'll be prompted to change your default browser from Internet Explorer, which is the default. I'm going to go ahead and change mine to Chrome because Internet Explorer is trash. And I like Google to track everything I do. Wait, what? I might need to think that through. Anyway. Once you've changed your browser to anything other than Internet Explorer, you'll be prompted to change your text editor. I'll change mine to Sublime Text because I like pretty colors on my text when I'm writing code. Who came up with these trash jokes anyway? Once installation is finished, you can go ahead and click through the menu. If you check the notification area, you'll see that the WAMP server is not yet running. To run it, navigate to the folder where you have it installed. Or, if you can't remember where it's installed, you can search for WAMP in the Windows search bar. Run the wampmanager.exe file. If you're logged into a non-admin account, you'll have to enter your admin creds. Now you should see that the WAMP server icon on the taskbar. Left-click the icon and click localhost at the top. Localhost is a host name that means this computer. It allows you to view the Apache web server that is now running on your computer. You can see the default web page here. If you don't see this page, then something is wrong with the WAMP server. If you left-click the icon again and click the www directory, this will take you to the folder that stores all the files for the web server. The index.php page is the one that you visited in the browser. We can create a new PHP-generated web page by right-clicking and creating a new text document. Rename the file and make sure the file extension is .php. If it isn't, you will have to change it. To view the file extension, click the View tab and select Show File Extensions. Now, back to the web browser. You can navigate to the web page you just created by adding a slash and the name of your new file to the localhost hostname. Hit enter and you'll be taken to your new page. 
We can see that the Apache serves normal HTML files in addition to PHP files if we create a new HTML file. If I change the URL to localhost slash the name of the, my HTML file, you will see that I can access and view the HTML page. Notice that the title changed up in the browser bar. If you want to work with MySQL database, you can do this by left-clicking the WAMP server icon and clicking the PHP MyAdmin button. If you've never heard of PHP MyAdmin, it's a convenient web GUI that allows you to make changes on your MySQL database. It's much easier to use than the command line. The default login is root for the username and leave the password field blank. That's all there is to installing WAMP web server on your Windows computer. In future videos, I'll show you how to use PHP to generate web pages, how to connect PHP to the database, and more. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up so more people see it. If you like the video and would like to see more videos about working with PHP, MySQL, and the WAMP or LAMP stack, please subscribe so you'll be notified when I upload. As always, have a great day. I'm out.